Uh, people wanted to see what I was up to. So, here's a basic idea of what I'm planning. These carriages I built a while ago, and these were going to be for the updated Cannonfield maps. So I got all the way to Cannonfield 5, had these things built. These are actually brushes that I then exported with proper and reskinned them. And now that I know how to use Blender, I, I gotta fix these things. They're not too bad. They're they're basic models which I like, so you have a lot of them on the screen at the same time. I just need to fix some of the UV map and the texture. So we gotta get into Photoshop and fix these things. So uh, I have these. You click on the wheels, it moves them forward. That's one of the buttons. They have four buttons. Then they have a momentary rotate button that moves them up and down, just like on Cannon Field. And I adjust the height. You have the fire button, but you have this new button. This is a trails button. So if you're on a hill and you don't want it to roll backwards, I'll just have it roll backward a little bit, put it into position. What you can do is you can hit the trails button. That actually puts friction on the axle, and you can see how it's not sliding. So I think that's a cool little button. Then you can turn it off and just have it slide, turn it back on, turn it on. Eh, cool idea. And then once you fire it, it actually turns that button off, so it has recoil. So those are the cannons. Those are finished. Pretty refined and uh, minimal pieces. Then I have all of these walls that I built. So that's no clip. These are just pieces that I stuck together. Uh, basic, you know, basic model work, basic shapes that all got stuck together. This couldn't be more than maybe 30 or 40 polygons in this model right here for this wall. Really just a basic setup. This is a little bit more complex. These is a little bit more complex from that. But just trying to do a basic shape that can be modular and build this entire structure. As you can see. So I didn't have any plan for this outline. I just sort of stuck these pieces together and made them... See this one goes down a hill and turns a corner. This is a 90 degree, 90 degree piece, but it doesn't quite go at 90 degrees. So you can see how I can fudge the angles a little bit and just make a custom shape for a keep with these five different pieces that I built. So I'm going to hit the wall. And the wall has a button on it. And if that button gets hit five times, currently set up for five times, then the wall will come down. And what I did is I, I took all these bricks apart and made them separate models inside a blender. And then I did a physics simulation of a cannonball hitting that wall, taking the wall down. And then I baked that simulation into a, an animation that can be imported into the Source Engine. And if that sounds familiar, then you've probably played Half-Life 2 Episode 2, which uses cinematic physics. And that's kind of what they did. It's limited to 128 pieces, just because that's how many armatures you can have in a single model. Sorry, how many bones you can have in a single armature. So you can see it just exploded. That was our physics simulation. A pre-baked animation, so it doesn't tax the CPU and can be used in multiplayer. Which I think is cool. So it takes the wall down changes the collision model. We can turn on V-Collide. You can see it's a pretty complex collision model. Then we can turn on third person. And I made it complex just so it looks natural as you walk over it. And it feels natural. But you can see everything else has a pretty basic collision model. And that was the important thing, especially for multiplayer. Let's turn on first person and just check out the fort real quick. Turn off the collide. Alright. So we can walk up these stairs. 
and we can walk along all of the different edges of the wall. It's a little, a little bit difficult to get to places. It's actually impossible in this case to get to places once the wall is down. So that sort of affects how you play the game. And what's going to happen is there'll be artillery inside shooting at the cannons outside. And the cannons outside can be destroyed. If the cannons outside get destroyed, then what you'll have to do is you'll have to put um, powder barrels on the door. So if all your carriages are destroyed, you'll have to put powder barrels at the gate to blow the gate door open. But we can see that this is actually... Boom! It can destroy itself. So those couldn't be destroyed. And then there'll be artillery inside that can possibly be destroyed. And I, I don't know how I'm going to work it out yet. But it'll probably be based off like a ticket system. So there'll be a, a certain number of tickets for the players inside the fort. Certain number of player, uh, tickets for the players outside the fort. And hopefully, except for the flags and the players... Hopefully everything will be a custom model just to make it not look like Battlegrounds. Have sort of a a nice update to the game which it desperately needs. So that's what I've been working on. I hope, hope you find this interesting. <laughs>